Give me your eyes Give me your eyes Of everything I am Stephen Holloway, and I am also a graduate from CBS. And because of CBS, my life has been transformed and I am equipped for ministry. But it wasn't supposed to be. My life was set up for failure. I should have received a sentence of 25 years, or I could have been six feet deep. Hi, I'm Stephen Holloway. I am a graduate from the College of Biblical Studies. At the age of seven, my father was sentenced to serve 99 years at Huntsville State Penitentiary. It was the most devastating time of my life and emotional at seven years old. I never got a chance to catch a football or uh, go fishing with him. And um, he ended up serving five years in Huntsville State Penitentiary. And for those, those five years, my family would take me twice a month to see him. And for two hours, all I could do was cry uncontrollably. After five years, he got out and uh, he ended up coming to see me play football in eighth grade at Johnston Junior High School. And uh, within, five, within 12 months, he would get back in trouble and end up spending the next 27 years in Ramsey Unit 1. And during that time, I got introduced to drugs. I uh, was introduced to crack cocaine, and I, I smoked everything that looked like it was white. And at the age of 27, I lost a $40,000 job at 27 years old. Wasn't able to see my children, and had decided that I wanted to commit suicide. So I decided that I wanted to drug, rob the, the, the drug dealer. I took about maybe 40 to 50 cocaine rocks from him. And I had planned to smoke all of them that night because I wanted to die. You see, the church, the community, nobody really reached out to me and my family. We really suffered in silence. I was in the Mitsubishi dual overhead cam, 16 valve, fully loaded Eclipse and they were in a Ford Tempo. And when I took the, 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 the crack from them, I was all back behind Adel Park and Tom Bass and ended up on Alameda Genoa Road. And uh, when they finally hit me from the rear, my, my, my tires hit the, the curve and it bent in and I went from going 60 miles to about 10 miles an hour, coming down Alameda Genoa Road. Got out the car, grabbed the bag, and uh, I heard a voice say, you're going to die tonight. And I ran about 10 yards or so, and one of them clipped me from the back. And a guy just come, and he swung. And had I not raised my hand, my arm at the time, it probably would have caught, caught me right across my face. But then he swung again, and the second time he hit me, it was across the back of my head. And I felt my head open up. And he swung again, wham! And the third time he hit me, the second time he hit me across my head, all I could say was, Lord, have mercy. And that night, I ended up being stitched up at the VA hospital that cost me 12 stitches in my head. And that was the night I decided that I was going to change. I said, the Lord had to knock some sense into me to get me on the right track. But that night, I answered my calling, and on February 19, 1995, I preached my first sermon. From the book of Psalm, number 37, 23 and 24 says, if the Lord delights in a man's way, he makes his steps firm. Though he stumble, he will not fall, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. And in May of 1995, I walked through the doors Back then it was Houston Bible Institute. Today it's the College of Biblical Studies. And my life began to change. God called me after hearing this one day. I shall never forget hearing this sound as long as I live. And as 
I ended up at Crockett State School in Crockett, Texas, and I saw kids that were black boys, that were white boys, that were brown boys. Some of them had parents, some didn't have parents. And I should never forget hearing this. And God called me in to working with juvenile offenders and their families. When I started 20 years ago, it was $30,000 to incarcerate a kid. Today, it's 100, over 123,000. And nothing really has changed. And so I've been doing prison, I was in prison ministry, started of June of 95. I visit one time, I went back in July, and I visit two times, and in August they made me the leader of a prison ministry at our church. And within two years, our ministry had baptized over 256 boys. Amen, into the kingdom of God. And I want to say the College of Biblical Studies has done exceedingly abundantly and above all that I could ever think or imagine in my life. Because you see, I should have got 25 to life or I could have been six feet deep. But God had another plan for my life and let me walk through the doors of CBS and met Dean Bird, who taught me how to read my, how to observe uh, the text and, and, and do Bible study. And, and then I had uh, Nicholas Ellen, who taught me about the biblical framework that I've counseled kids all across this state and even today. And then Guy Jackson, who taught me to never keep God in the box. That's why I got all of my props with me. <laughs> and it's just been, been an awesome experience. Now I am the founding CEO of Pace Youth Programs Incorporated because this college poured the truth in my heart and moved me from gloomy days to glory days from I can't to I can, and just really, really impacted my life. And so we have an organization called Pace Youth that started in the year of 2001 with juvenile offenders and their families here in Harris County. And because of what this college has done for me and the investment that you have made in the college because in 2004, my wife had triplets. And all I can think at that time was milk and diapers. <laughs> 350 diapers a month, 24 gallons of milk a month, and 1,000 wipes. <laughs> but it was the College of Biblical, and lots of medical bills. But it was because of Anita Carmen and Buck, Buck Anderson that had given me some scholarships to help me finish and get my degree. And not only do we have a program for juvenile offenders and their families, we're getting ready to sign an MOU with Prison Fellowship next week to start working with uh, the families of the incarcerated. And we're really excited about that. And so I want to say to this college, this is my school. This school invested in me, and we need more biblical leaders on the ground every day working with the people who are suffering in silence. And so I'm honored to have gotten this opportunity to share with you what the Lord has done through this college for me. And so the laborers, the harvest is plentiful, as the text says, but the laborers are few.